Meet Fran. She's the author of several novels and she has a very solid track record with sales with her publisher. Her most recent novel did exceptionally well and she just sent a proposal for her next novel to her editor hoping for another contract. Her editor, let's call her Cece, responded with nothing but praise for the writing for the idea and expressed how excited she and everyone else on the team was to continue working with Fran. But there is a catch. Before CC takes this idea, this proposal to acquisitions, she needs Fran to write up a marketing plan. Events and things that Fran is going to put together on her own time and with her own financial resources in order to promote her book. And if Fran really wants her best chance at an offer, at another contract, she really needs to consider joining TikTok. It's not required, it won't be in the contract, but if Fran wants a contract at all, she really should consider committing to hopping on that book talk train. This is real, this happened. This is happening to authors. The things that publishers never used to say out loud, like, we aren't going to market your midlist title, that's on you. And if you don't have a social media following, we aren't publishing your book no matter how good it is. They're starting to say it. They're starting to say it out loud. Now, I have made a video on book talk in the past and I will link it up here, but here is a quick summary about my personal feelings and opinions on it. I hate it. <laughs> as a viewer, as a creator, I mean, granted, I haven't tried it, but I know what short form content is. I was on Instagram long enough to see when reels came in. I am here on YouTube and as a creator here, I am constantly being pushed by YouTube to create shorts, create shorts. And while I have done it, because I figured out a way that I can use shorts that is fun for me and it doesn't stress me out, they're hardly going viral. And as a viewer, I can't stand watching them. I don't watch shorts, I don't watch reels, and I know I will never be on TikTok even as a viewer because short form content to me, after about a minute of scrolling through those videos, it feels like strobe lights are starting to flash and an air horn is blasting in my ear and it gets louder and brighter until I just stop. That's me. Now look, if you like TikTok or reels or shorts or whatever, that is awesome as a creator or a viewer, that's great. Please, go do you, okay? I'm not saying that authors shouldn't do TikTok. That's not what this video is about. I'm calling into question the fact that publishers seem to think that TikTok is like the holy grail of book marketing, like the fix that we were all waiting for, and I don't understand why. So to publishers, I have a few questions. Recently, an article was published about book talk, and it caused kind of a kerfuffle on Twitter, as anything tends to do. And while I have opinions about that particular piece, it was really about book talk from the perspective of a reader and reviewer, not as an author, and so I don't want to derail this video with my commentary on that. I realized after filming this that actually this article was written by a published author and does include information about using book talk as an author. Not only that, but the author who wrote this article has a course on, for sale on book talk for writers. Now, for what it's worth, it does say at the bottom of the course that you do not have to become a content creator to participate in book talk culture and use it as a marketing research tool in your writing career, which is interesting. I don't really have much else to say about that because that's all I know, but I thought I would put it in here for what it's worth. But in his Twitter thread responding to this article, author Brandon Taylor said, it is not my job to be flogging my wares in nobody's marketplace. That is a publisher's job and perhaps turning every writer into an entrepreneur at the dawn of social media was not a great idea. Book talk? That's reader business. That's none of my business, what they do over there. Nothing to do with me. I should not know a thing about it. That's Goodreads the movie, as far as I'm concerned. I'll link his whole thread below, but Goodreads the movie took me out because I don't think I've ever read a more perfect description of what book talk is. And it really made me think, over the last decade, we have gone through so many firestorms about authors interacting with reviews and reviewers on Goodreads. And on booktube and on bookstagram and on facebook and on twitter it always turns into a really hot debate and i've talked about this in the past but my strategy is basically what brandon said it's none of my business i don't get involved 
I understand that some reviewers are actually really, really excited when an author engages with a review of their book, especially if it was a positive review. It can be a really fun just interaction between a reader and an author. I really, I understand that. But the thing is, it also makes some reviewers really uncomfortable when an author comes into that space, even if the review was positive and the author has nothing to say but thank you. And to me, it's like, I just don't want to roll that dice. Will the reader be, you know, uncomfortable or will they be happy? I don't know. But if I choose not to engage, there's no harm done. And if I choose to engage, potentially there could be harm done. So it's easier just to stay out of it. I've also heard the argument that an author interacting with an online review on any social media platform is no different than an event in which authors and readers interact. And that is absolutely not true because when authors and readers attend events, they know that the other will be there. They know that is the space into which they are going. Whereas when a reviewer posts their review on any platform online, it is not an open invitation for authors to come in and comment. And I feel like that's where most authors tend to land whenever this discussion comes up. I would think publishers feel the same way because it's their publicity teams who have to put out the fires when authors go off the rails and start publicly bashing reviewers. So that's my first question for you, publishing. Why are you asking or even requiring authors now to enter the book reviewer space of book talk? I don't understand. Like I'm here on YouTube, I have a YouTube channel, but I am not on booktube. I don't interact on booktube. I don't tag my videos as booktube. And when I watch booktube videos, I rarely comment. And if I do, it's completely from the perspective of a reader and has nothing to do with me as an author. Why do you think it's a good idea for us authors to get on TikTok and interact face to face with our readers, many of whom are minors? I don't want a victim blame here, but it kind of sounds like you're asking for trouble. Question number two. I would like anyone out there who has worked in marketing, I don't care if it's in publishing, any industry, tell me, please, please tell me if there is one single time in the history of marketing when this strategy has worked. A product catches fire because the youth did a grassroots thing, companies try to mimic the grassroots thing, and it actually results in amazing sales. Because I can't think of a single example. To me, telling authors, especially middle grade and young adult authors, to get in on book talk just feels like you're asking us to turn into that Steve Buscemi meme. How do you do, fellow kids? What? Question number three. Are you aware that social media platforms are fleeting? Are you so sure that TikTok an app the FBI believes poses national security concerns is still going to be king a year or two from now when the books you're acquiring today actually hit the shelves? How is Join Book Talk a solid long-term strategy for publishers and authors? Question number four. Please explain to me why manuscript wish lists almost universally claim to want to represent and uplift marginalized authors telling diverse stories, because I don't believe you. It's been almost three years since publishing paid me and advances have not improved and contract terms are getting worse. You seized on diversity, which is simply the unchanging reality of the world we live in, as a trend to be capitalized on like vampires or dystopians. Rather than taking the lesson Own Voices sought to teach, namely that so many of the books you've published over the last century have been filled with lazy and harmful stereotypes of marginalized people, and perhaps you ought to publish more marginalized authors, you turned it into both a cash grab and a way to virtue signal that you're a progressive industry while simultaneously pressuring authors to come out of the closet, divulge their mental illnesses, stay in their lanes by writing fictionalized memoirs instead of actual fiction, even if it means reliving their own trauma when all they wanted to do was write a rom-com. And yes, a lot of this pressure comes not from you, but from a small but loud subset of people on Twitter who are looking for a reason to cancel anything and everyone. But you're choosing to let that small percentage of readers who thrive on outrage to control which authors and books you publish and why you publish them. And now on top of everything, you're pressuring authors to spend their time, their financial and their mental and emotional resources putting together their own marketing plans that include travel expenses, registration fees, 
preparation for presentations, and joining a social media app with an algorithm that the marginalized creators who have been using said app have been saying for years both suppresses their content and actively pushes violent videos in their feeds. Do you really want to uplift marginalized authors or just exploit them? And number five, my final question for you publishers, at what point does this stop? Should authors start getting marketing degrees? Should we start hiring our own publicists? Something that many traditionally published authors do and good on them, but it is not cheap. Should we do Kickstarters for our books that you are publishing? I mean, look, if Brandon can make millions, surely the rest of us can do it. At what point do you think it'd be a good idea to ask us to start putting our own resources into design and production and printing? I guess what I'm really asking here is, at what point do you fully transition from traditional publishing house into Vanity Press? As always, with my traditional publishing videos that turn into kind of angry rants, I want to add the disclaimer here that I truly believe the vast majority of editors and marketing professionals and publicists at these houses, they are not bad people. They are good people in a bad system. It's the mind bogglingly wealthy people at the top of these houses that have the say over whether these systems change or just stay the same. But these conversations always start down here with authors and agents and editors, our first points of contact. We need those on the front lines, so to speak, of acquisitions to reflect when, for example, an editor excitedly acquires a book about a character who is going through a specific struggle by an author who went through or is going through the same struggle, but then turn around and ask them or encourage them to attend a festival or conference at their own expense, all the while documenting it on a social media app that they might feel very uncomfortable using. Aside from being wrong on many levels, this isn't sustainable. It's our job as authors to tell stories. And while actual writing will never be 100% of our job, it needs to take priority over marketing, publicity, and becoming TikTok court jesters.